Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Use About It Testing. I hope your week is a good week. So today we're going to work primarily on the uh, on the material that you will need for the Use About It Testing for next week, as I mentioned yesterday. So we are together for two hours. And, uh, and then primarily, we will be looking at the test scenario. I would say the most critical piece for usability testing is really the task, the uh, the task and the user task or the test scenario, whatever. You're going to see different names for uh, for tests or user test or user scenario. They are all of one of the same. They are the the engine of usability testing. Uh, it's really where you want to be uh, getting all the insights that you can from the customer, from the user, from the heuristic evaluation so um and as a reminder the heuristic assignment number one is due today at midnight so uh this is going to be the basis for everything that we're going to do when it comes to usability testing for uh for the next assignment and then for this week's lab and then for next week and our analysis so it's a very very important piece so i look forward to going through your heuristic and be able to provide your feedback but uh, the work that you've done so far, hopefully, you've identified definitely a business and a website and some areas that you think that are problematic based on a heuristic, trying to go through the, the goal as a user, as a participant, and then finding out challenges and then, uh, and then taking those challenges and those goals and then testing them into the usability testing is really what we want to do. So it's really, really the engine. It's really super important. Uh, to everything that we're going to do from this point on. I would say the screener, once we know the user goal, that you know who the screener should be, what the screener should be, you will know who you want to invite. So this is something that we also need to prepare um, on this lab and this lab. And uh, and then there's also a submission for uh, for the, the material, uh, which I believe I said, let's just make sure there's a submission. For uh, for this material, which is uh, February, uh, which will be February seven, so that is uh, this week, obviously, and February seven, as uh, as we know, will be Sunday midnight, I believe. So I change it to Sunday midnight. So uh, very very important that uh, that we do the, uh, the the right choice for user scenarios. And uh, so that, uh, because this is really what you're going to be spending all of the time in the usability testing for next week with uh, some of your colleagues. So today, as I said, we're going to be working on uh, developing the planning material. I have added uh, some uh, material as well, some samples. So yesterday I said you could probably find usability material on, uh, on Google. So I did that for you. Uh, I know you have a lot of classes, you have a lot of things to worry and think about. So let me just share with you uh, what I have added. So on today's week number three, I have this section called Usability Testing Material. So where you would normally find the readings, you would find the lesson slides. Uh, you will find below it Usability uh, Testing Material a sample. So there you'll see a checklist. So the checklist is uh, going to look somehow familiar because it's similar to what we've looked at yesterday in terms of the checklist that I provided in the uh, in the PowerPoint in the class. But there's also a sample for notes, and this is something that we're going to review now today as well. And uh, and then there's also a sample for the test script. So the test script and then the permission to record. So really, uh, what I need from you is the uh, Definitely the notes, the test notes, the test script, and the permission to record. You will see it's very simple. But the uh, the pieces that is most critical is the test script and the test note. This is where you're going to have the user scenarios as well. And I will show you an example that we will uh, that you will do in the breakout today as well. So we're going to have a busy two hours. And uh, and now as a reminder, the dates. And what you need to submit is on this week. And there's also a tab uh, dedicated for uh, so that you can um, attach your uh, your the material that you need to uh, to submit. So just go to moderated usability testing, 
And then for between now and Sunday, when you have all of your test plan and the script ready, uh, this is where you're going to submit. I just need a submission per, per team as well. But make sure that you go through the instruction. There is the uh, instruction, uh, very detailed. And uh, that is what you will find in this PDF. So make sure that you go through the instruction. This is where most people actually uh, sometimes get confused or uh, miss. And, uh, and then you'll be marked on the um, how you're going to be engaged with your class, with your team starting today, and then the, uh, the preparation and the material that you'll be sending to me as well. So part A is 10, 10 points. And, uh, and then part B is um, a little bit more points. It's 25 points. And this is what you need to submit between now and Sunday. Really, we're getting ready for all of our testing for next week. There's a lot of material in this week, so uh, make sure that you go through it. There's no way that we can go through all of the examples of all of the material from the class. Um, so you really have to, uh, to go through the material on your own as well. And, um, and then if you follow the templates, I think it'll be uh, super simple. And really, the core is coming up with the user test, uh, the user scenarios, and the screener will be easy. And obviously, next week, we all do everything we're doing is remote. Um, it's, we're going to be uh, doing this in class. Uh, you're going to do it with participants, with people in the class. So uh, we're not calling for participant external. We're not giving any incentive. So this week, next week is easy. But then the real uh, big project towards the end of the term, uh, this is what we're going to do with real people. So, but we obviously not going to be giving them incentive. So the incentive piece is an easy piece. But normally, these are things that you would not need to, uh, to think about and consider. So uh, let's look at the test scenarios and how you would actually design a, uh, a test scenario or the, uh, the user task and uh, that you would want to test in your uh, in your session so let's look at some real example of and how we come up to the user scenario i'm just going to try to share files and i want to share it live as i go Okay, so let's make sure that everybody can see this. Awesome. So can I have a, uh, well, this is an example of, I don't know if one of the team has used the uh, Expedia, but a very good example of a user scenario would be, uh, well, first of all, at this point, if you have selected Expedia, and let's say that you're going through the heuristic of Expedia for, uh, for a customer who's actually not a customer, who's a prospect customer who's looking to go on vacation in somewhere, then uh, you would definitely uh, be thinking about the, a scenario where someone wants to book an all-inclusive vacation. So, uh, and I would say that's probably one of the flow that is probably a very popular flow at Expedia. What we notice, and this is my experience of Expedia, there are multiple options or multiple places where you can actually go to book an all-inclusive vacation. There is a tab that says vacation plus hotel, and then there's a tab next to it that says all-inclusive vacation. So perhaps maybe the team, and if that's the, uh, that's the brand you've selected, then you would probably be very interested in trying to understand if people are actually even be able to find the uh, are able to understand the differences uh, between the two of uh, the uh, between all-inclusive vacation or a hotel and flight. So uh, that may be a scenario that you actually want to investigate. And that would be a very good example of maybe your first scenario. Now, mind you, maybe that one is complicated. And one of the uh, recommendation with usability testing is you probably want to give them the easiest scenario at the beginning and uh, so that they feel comfortable and as much as you will tell them that they're not being tested, some of them will still think that they're being tested. So the easiest scenario will be the best, the best way to go about it. But here, my first scenario for me, usually what I do with a participant is I would, obviously, you have to introduce yourself, and then this is part of the script. And uh, 
I will explain a little bit more about Lilian. It's really optional, okay? So I gave this template I've used from the internet. It's from UX Bin. It's actually very good. They have a lot of good material. So this template here that I'm showing you is actual, um, it's a template that you can use for when you take notes. So the note taker, remember we have five people, note taker, moderator, the participant, and you're probably gonna have observer as well. So uh, you would want in the client that you need to manage. But what you would do, and one of the, uh, one of the material is a waiver. You're gonna need to give them a waiver. But typically, the participant will show up at the session. They'll come into the room, and then you, the moderator, will say, um, hello, Lillian, thank you so much for coming to the session today. Uh, we're excited to have you here. We are going to be spending an hour together. So one of the templates is exactly this. And, uh, and then, but your test plan has more detail. And, uh, and then you will tell them that uh, obviously they're coming in and this is a, a session where you're just going to be with them and uh, it's going to be an hour session and then you will ask them to do specific things with a website so it's either a website or it's a, mo a mobile app uh, that you will be testing and uh, and then depending on what you're testing then it's either going to be a real website or it's going to be a prototype or it can also be paper and wireframe as i've mentioned but in this context I'm assuming that everybody has picked a website. So it's all gonna be through a website. And, uh, and then you'll say that you will have specific tasks that you want to them and the session will be recorded. Uh, and there's some people behind the wall, behind the, the mirror, and then they usually go and wave at the people. Uh, initially, they might be a little bit nervous, but then they, they will relax. They will come, uh, they will relax, and then they will forget about the, uh, the equipment, and that is if you're in a lab. So right now, we're assuming that we're in a formal setup. And then you give them the waiver. So there's a, uh, a template for the waiver that I give you under usability testing uh, for, the, uh, for the samples that you can use. And then you will tell them. So you will say, uh, thank you. The, the the actual website today is with Rogers, or the ex, ex, the site today that we're going to be testing is Expedia, and uh, and then this should really be the first time that they actually hear about Expedia. So you would have told the recruiting agency to not make any mention of the product because I think I've mentioned to you two things may happen. They may actually think that there's homework, and then they they will call and there will be a no show. Or they are going to be biased and they're going to think they're going to go through the website and then they're going to start doing things. So they will come and then they'll be prepared and you don't want that. You really want it to be spontaneous. In, in your recruiting, you would have probably involved or asked the recruiter to get people that are either Expedia customer so that you want to test something particular with them. There's a user goal that maybe that you found to uh, when it comes to making changes to the booking, finding the bookings, adding, deleting, canceling the booking that you think are problematic through your heuristic. So uh, there's a good chance that they may know it's Expedia, but usually what the recruiter will do is they will say, when they call the participants to recruit, they will ask them, are you a customer or are you thinking of going on vacation? And maybe that's one of your criteria for your screener. Maybe you want people that are going on vacation. So obviously, if they're booked as well with Expedia, then that's a criteria. And then you're going to say, uh, who, are, who are you going on vacation with? And then, uh, are you going on vacation with any of the provider? So you would say, are you going on vacation with, uh, with Sunwing? Are you going on vacation with Transat? Are you going with vacation with Air Canada? Are you going on vacation with Expedia? Then if they say, yes, I'm going to Expedia, then you will know that this is a customer who's qualifying to come as a participant. Now, it would probably be even easier if Expedia has given you a list of customers that they know that are about to travel, that maybe give them permission uh, to, uh, to participate in sessions whatsoever. And then at that point, they're probably going to have a good sense that they are uh, going to be coming in to talk about Expedia. So that is also a possibility. But let's say that this customer is a new customer, he's prospect, and maybe you told the recruiting agency that you want people that are actually about thinking about going on vacation. So they've been planning going on vacation for let's say maybe three months or maybe two months. That would be a criteria that you would give them. You have flexibility there of how many months, but this is a decision that you, can, that you would need to think about as a team. 
how much of difference that you make. But really what you want is you want them to be actively looking for a vacation. And then, uh, and then you may say that perhaps you do want to bring people that have already traveled with Expedia or who have just traveled with any brand you don't care. And uh, this creator can say, who do you normally travel with? And that just becomes a piece of information for you, but not something that will disqualify them. And then they come to the session and you'll say, you're here for Expedia today. So they're going to say, oh, great, I know Expedia. Uh, and, uh, and I was actually just looking to book with them. Then you go, great, the screener has done a good job. So, uh, and then you ask them, are you, are you ready to go? Uh, can we start? And the session usually start, used for, uh, lasts for one hour. But then by the time they come in, by the time you introduce them, and then by the time you actually go through a version of the screener with them as well, which is in a test plan. So your test plan will say you're probably going to go through a few of the questions in the screener just to make them relax as well and say, hey, Lillian, thank you for the session, for coming for the session. Uh, I understand you are employed or you're not employed. I understand that you work as, let's say, maybe an accountant. Uh, you normally travel maybe once a year. So maybe that's some of your criteria too. You probably want people to have travel that are who travel uh, probably on a regular basis. But again, it all depends on who you try to target for your test. But there's no point to bring someone who's never been on vacation because I don't think you're going to get a lot of insight. You probably want to bring people that have been on vacation that travel so that they have some knowledge. Uh, but again, Expedia may think different, but you can definitely guide them. And then, so you go through a version of your screener, and uh, and then you say, uh, "Let's start." I'm going to give you scenarios, and then uh, and then you also remind them that they're not being tested. It's really us trying to like, improve Expedia. Uh, it's not about them. There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, we uh, we are really trying to see how we can improve our design. So make sure that you tell them, and that will be in your test prep. It, it's also in a template that I have given you. Then you begin, and you will ask, and then you can also you also have to tell them to remind them uh, that they can stop at any point if they want. And I think this is important uh, to know. Uh, the participants are in research setup, so by ethical uh, purposes, if someone is not comfortable for some reason to actually answer any of the question, uh, they don't have to. You cannot, and uh, and then you have to tell them if they are actually for some reason there's a question they're not comfortable or they don't want to answer. That's okay. The second thing is if for some reason they want to stop the session. And uh, and they have to uh, and they, for any reasons uh, that they that they choose, they can also stop the session and they still get paid the incentive. So very very important. And uh, I would say in my career it's never happened that someone has actually fought to the point that they wanted to leave and I had to give them the incentive. It never happened. But if it happens, uh, they are entitled and uh, and then uh, they will go and you will have to pay them the incentive. On the topic of incentive, the, the screening company who will actually recruit and find the participants for you, they will take care of paying them the incentive. And usually it's cash money, uh, and they probably work with them uh, directly, or they do it with the front desk, depending if you uh, if you hire a, a facility uh, where uh, where you can do the, the testing behind a mirror. And I told you to Google in Toronto, I'm sure there's some places for this. And uh, yes, the amount of the incentive, I think we mentioned that yesterday. It will depend on how specific your industry or your participants are. So if you're doing, usually I say be prepared to at least $75 to $100 for the hour. It's a full hour, 75 to 100. And, uh, but if you bring in uh, healthcare, people that are in healthcare and doctor and lawyers for whatever reasons, uh, because you're testing a product that is in that industry specific, uh, is be prepared to pay 150 and sometimes 200 dollars. It's expensive, so uh, and you will determine how much incentive with your clients, with your customer. Now, but you should guide them. You should really say, there's no point to bring someone at 25 dollars an hour. There's no point to bring someone below 50 or 75 because you know what's going to happen. They're not going to show up, and then you're not going to have good quality. So I would say when you build a budget for your customer, build a budget for 100 dollars. And then maybe be prepared to maybe have to go to $75, but that's the minimum I would go because they're not going to show up. 
So at this point, you've told them uh, it's not about them. They can go at any point if they want. They don't have to answer if they don't want to answer. And, uh, and that's okay too. And then they sign the form and now you can go. Now you don't forget to tell them that it's being recorded as well. The session is being recorded. So all of this will be in your test uh, script sample that I give you. Very important to include. Then the fun starts. So at this point, you're still just talking to them. You don't, you tell them, no, let's not go through the computer yet because I will tell you that's the first thing they want to do. They want to go very fast. They're very excited. They actually want to go and they want to, uh, they want to do the, uh, they want to start, they want to start playing with the computer. So, uh, you don't, you don't, yeah. So what you would say that, then you would say, we are doing, uh, as, as you guys testing for Expedia, they want to improve their website. So uh, I understand that you're looking for vacation. You will know about them. And then this is something that you need to do. Every, when, every, when you start, before you start a session, the, the people that have done the screening with you, they'll give you a list of all the participants and they'll give you high level demographic or about the criteria that you've said that you're really interested in. So they will say, Lillian, uh, age brackets, uh, employed, she works for X company or she'll say uh, he's a, she's a director or she's a manager, whatsoever. She is about to go to on vacation. She's looking for a vacation. She's travel like Spada before. She's actively looking for a vacation and she'll travel once a year. So maybe these are the criteria that you were very, very interested. So you will know who's in front of you. So you will reuse that in your screener. So now you will say, and usually that's my first test scenario for them is great, Lillian, I know you're going about thinking going to Cancun on a vacation. And now, uh, so when you think of going on a vacation or when you think of going to a website where you can book the vacation, what are some of the things that you actually expect to be able to see or be able to do on uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, booking your uh, vacation? And then you stop there. You don't give them too much guidance. So, uh, so what you will do at this point is you will list, and this is what I'm showing you in this document. You would actually show that you would start listing the items uh, that they're telling you as well as they're uh, as they're answering the question as what they would expect. So you would list the items. So you would say maybe Lillian. So if I'm Lillian, let's say I'm Lillian, and uh, and then remember we're not looking at expedited yet. So you would say, uh, well, usually when I book a vacation, uh, I will come to the site and I would probably expect a place where I can actually book, uh, look for all inclusive vacations, maybe deals, maybe last minute deals. Then you make note of that. Uh, I would expect to be able to buy it online uh, and then buy online, but then perhaps there'll be an option for me that I can call if I need some help, or maybe I'll be able to do chat. And then, uh, I would expect that I'll be able to see the hotel. I'll be able to see the list of hotels, what they use, the amenities. I'll be able to see pictures and photos. And um, and then what else? Then I think after I'm done, then I would probably expect that I'll be able to do uh, to to look at my bookings and maybe I can come and make changes if I want at a later time. And then I'd like to see uh, which airlines I'm flying with. And then when I look for a vacation, what's really important for me is actually the, the flight times. I need to know the flight times. And also I want to see how many flight seats there are left in the planes because I'm traveling with maybe my family as well. But you would have decided with the screener if you wanted couples only, family only, and maybe you don't care as well. It all depends on what you found in your heuristic evaluation. Maybe you found that traveling as a family, looking for a vacation for family is actually a, a challenge or a problem. And you really want to spend time with people that are family travel. And usually a family a plus is three, four or five people. Uh, and the challenge with family travel, you cannot always book a vacation because some of the hotels have limitation for rooms and you have to call. So uh, these will be things depending on what you found in your estate. So now you have a list from Lillian. Now the chances are, obviously she said, I, I, should, I would expect to be able to book my vacation. Now your first scenario task that I have shown here was to book your vacation. So that's great. Uh, and maybe that's gonna be then the first scenario that you're gonna tackle, that you're gonna ask Lillian to actually go and then do on the Expedia website. So 
this is now, so your task one was to get a sense for what their expectation will be, but it's not really a task. You're kind of still like exploring with them what they would think, because what's going to happen here is maybe you're going to find a, new ideas. Maybe she's going to tell you things that no one has thought about that was actually important in when someone is actually looking for a vacation. So consider that opening question with them as getting just more insight about what is important with someone like Lillian who's actually going on vacation. You hope that you've actually addressed some of the scenarios that she's listed to you. But if you haven't, you have two choices. You just keep them on your list and you list them or maybe you're going to find an opportunity later to go and maybe discover some of those uh, goals that she gave you as well. Or maybe you're going to be paying a special attention to these specific things that she may have mentioned as you go through your scenario of booking a vacation. If you think that maybe there's going to be something there. As an example, if in your book a vacation, we all know that when you book a vacation, it's people are care about the flight information. So maybe when you go through that journey, maybe she'll remind you. Actually, she probably will. She As she go through that journey, the chances are she'll say, well, where's my flight information? And let's say the flight information is hard to find. Then that's something that has be, you know, you will make note and that you can flag as a challenge, right? It's a challenge. Maybe it's not something that you thought was a challenge when you've done your heuristic evaluation. So the point is, you're going to use visual testing with a certain idea of maybe what is problem or what is broken, but you have to be open to maybe new things. And obviously, this is why we do the testing. You're going to discover more elements or more uh, more details that you may have not known because you're not expert. You, in particularly this class, uh, you don't you haven't traveled, you haven't worked with a travel agent, you haven't worked at Expedia, but you have a sense of what travel might be because you know most of us have traveled. To that, to that level of details, to the flight times, to the number of rooms, to the, the some people care about the how many rooms there are in the resort. So you're going to find a lot, okay? But now we have our intro, and then, lucky us, you had a scenario where you said, I want the participant to go through a booking all-inclusive vacation experience for multiple reasons. Maybe one of them, you believe it's hard to find, or it's hard on Expedia to actually see where all-inclusive vacation is because you've noticed that there are two tabs that are side by side and they look alike and you also notice maybe another uh, other items in the experience as well and you said i want the consumer to actually go through booking a vacation now you have multiple options for that just that scenario here as well alone but before i continue are there any questions about anything that i have said so far i know it's a lot of details but uh this is uh, this is usability testing. It's a lot of things to think, but this is why I give you a checklist as well. But any questions about either the incentive, the opening, what the, the fact that they're allowed to go, opening up the session, and uh, and then going into the first scenario. Are there any questions? Yeah, I know it's a lot. It's a lot of a lot of material and. Uh, we are going to go as schedule. We feel that next week we need more time to prepare before we actually run a session. That would be a possibility for this class as well. But I don't want us to think that we're we are already extending. That's not what I'm saying. But if we feel that we are not, uh, that we need more time to be able to be better prepared before you do the sessions with your classmate, that will be an option. But there's a lot. There's a lot. So Lillian had a question initially. So within the test scenario, you will incorporate the persona there or within the test script? So uh, that's a good question, Lillian. Now, at this point, let's forget about the, the material. Let's forget about getting ready for, your, uh, for the testing. The first assignment was to look at, you've picked a business. So perhaps Lillian, do you want to share with me who is your brand? Sure, it's long and quick. Would you like me to put the uh, URL in the chat? Oh, can you share actually the can you share the screen with me with and then oh here, okay, I'll open it. Don't worry, I'll do it for you. Okay. I, I know it's technology sometimes can be funny, so it'll be easier if I just share. Yes, I remember now. We've talked about this. Okay, so uh, perhaps do you want to share with me, uh, Lillian, 
is there a particular maybe user or a, a section, an area, or a user goal or an area that you think in that site that you found with Log McQuaid that actually you do want to spend time? <laughs> I'm reading, I'm seeing the chat conversation at first impression. That you, your team has discovered that maybe is an area that you want to spend, uh, you want to, uh, to investigate in your testing. So we had three scenarios. One was um, to, per to look for an item based off of the cheapest price. So, for example, looking for a guitar. Another okay, one so, was in rentals. So I don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's take one. So let's take Lillian's example, and uh, and then I would say take notes. But the session is being recorded. Okay. Uh, as well. But uh, so you mentioned three scenarios in. Typically, because the sessions are last for an hour, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, by the time you said you, hey, hello, Lillian, welcome to the session, yeah. and then you're gonna, you, and then you're gonna go through the the a pre little screening just to put them at ease, and then you're gonna say and sign the waiver. Almost 15 minutes would have gone by. You have about 40 okay. minutes, 40 minutes of doing the user scenarios. About 40 minutes yeah. of that. I would okay. say the maximum number of scenario that you're going to be able to cover is five. And I would say it's going to be, you're going to manage to probably do three to five scenarios. Usually. Would it be three to five scenarios? Would it be three to five scenarios with the one goal? So for example, if the goal was looking for the cheapest guitar within that guitar, within that search or within that user goal, would there then be three to five scenarios that pop up is what you're saying? So or let me, yeah, let me let me explain to you what uh, what I mean by scenario. Like we're gonna use yeah. your your real scenario, and then uh, let's not put label. Yeah, okay? okay. So it's gonna be a task. You're gonna give them a task. So uh, so at this point, Lillian, you you already mm -hmm. have a sense of uh, who who are those customers? Like who who shops on law? And I don't know. I don't know that right. I remember you and I have talked about it. I don't really know that. I, I don't play music, so I'm. Uh, you probably don't want to hear me play music. It would be terrible. <laughs> so uh, this is a place where I could buy music. But this is a good. This is a good. Uh, we're doing a good test here. We're actually participants, and I'm actually thinking loud. So on the topic of thinking loud. It's very, very important. Use the testing happens with th thinking loud, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I could very well be one of, let's pretend that I'm, a, I'm not a music, I don't play music, but I'm actually considering of playing music. Maybe you said one of our, one of our users that we want is someone who's thinking about music, but they've never heard of Long and Macau. Could that be one of the participants that you've Identified? Or do you care? Who do you care about? We identified a new user who's looking to buy a guitar, but they haven't been on this website before. However, through a Google search, they might have came across this because they live within Ontario. Awesome. So this okay, great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So they are they they are somehow familiar with uh, with guitar. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they own a guitar. They do. They do not own a guitar. Okay. So this would be their first. Yeah. Okay. Very, very good. Yeah. We're so at this point we are touching the screener. We're touching about the who's going to be your your potential participant to a session. So we already know a few things about them. We know that they are they're obviously uh, interested in guitar. They are actively looking for to purchase a guitar, and they may not yes. be too very familiar with guitar. Maybe this is their first guitar. That could be a, a criteria mm -hmm. for you. Wow. Well. First guitar, okay. in active in guitar, looking for guitar. They they've decided they've decided that they're actually this is something they want to explore because there's COVID and there's time to kill and there's time, right? So uh, and now you for, sorry. No, I said and there's YouTube for learning lessons. Exactly, there's so much. YouTube is uh, the number one place to go. How to? It's really the number the keywords how to people go to YouTube. So we have a bit of a, a sense of now our profile. So. Uh, you pick this brand, maybe there's one, someone on the team who's actually thinking of a guitar. I would be surprised that there's maybe one of your team member who's actually thinking of maybe starting to get some guitar and taking some guitar lesson, who knows. So Leanne is looking for someone who's actually actively looking for guitar. They've never owned a guitar and uh, they're not a long and McKibby customer, but maybe perhaps uh, they've heard of other competitor competitors that Long and McCobb had, uh, McCabe, uh, had. And you said you're particularly interested in people that have never been to this site. Is there a particular reason why you don't want someone who's never been to this site, Lillian? 
Well, it's just because we were doing one based off of a new user and one based off of the existing with a different goal in mind. Um, we just thought that it would be an interesting way to explore the website from a new user perspective. Would this be easy for them to navigate? How's the experience for them? Um, you know, what kind of challenges may they have come come up with? Where like an existing user, they might have just tolerated how the website's experience is already because they frequent the website. So yeah, I guess yeah. we think focusing on the challenges that a new user would experience might be more supportive to like you know existing new perspective. Yes, absolutely. You're right. So let me share a bit of insights with you on on this particular topic as well. Okay. So and this is again all relevant to probably all of you uh, when you're thinking about you, who you, who you're going to bring because it can get very complex. You can go very 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 granular granular granular. And you're you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Maybe uh, maybe people someone who's been a long McCad McCaddy, uh, let's call them long. Maybe who's someone who's been at long. Uh, yeah. may already know and be very familiar with the site but then at the end of the day i think your your clear line is you want someone who's not a who who doesn't own a a, a guitar and who has yeah. not been, who has not been too long to long to the long website so you're saying yeah. that would be probably our preference uh yeah. and then you say perhaps we may want to bring some people that have been to the site do you want to bring people who have not someone who who's not a long customer but who's been to the site, are you really interested in those customer or not really? Um, just more people who've never been. I think just maybe they have been, but I think the focus with this particular goal is they're new, but they're very set on buying something. So that's okay. like it's not like coming to browse or coming to browse with intention to purchase. Okay, so you could say, then at this point you say, I'm gonna bring someone who's in market for guitar. He doesn't own a guitar. He's never owned a guitar. Uh, he's never been mm -hmm. to long the long website, or maybe he does not even know about long McCabe. And then you would tell mm -hmm. to the screener, to the people. Uh, now, is it man and woman? Do you know if there's a specific profile that that maybe long is more interested in or not? These will be questions up to you, but you can make this. Okay. Do we know? Do we don't we know? Do you know if it's more we man and woman? That might be something we we might have to discuss, but I could say for this example, we could just use um, maybe someone in their mid twenties. Well, like here's what I would say: is yeah. I would say for the purpose of our class, for the purpose of the assignment, the purpose of assignment number one, and the purpose of our class, uh, don't get to worry about uh, about male or female. Just okay. assume, just assume, or it's, you would say this: you will go with what uh, with what the, the typical profile of someone who buys a guitar is in the same proportion. What do I mean okay. by this? Let's say that you would, in terms of number of users, and the, the, this week's that goes in a lot more detail of how many users, and we're going to need to talk about this too, and to me, some of you already know. Uh, in terms of user, and I think I've mentioned three to five. So we already know for this customer who is in market, that first user that you want to bring Lillian, who's in market, you could bring three to five of them, maximum okay. five. We have three to five uh, that you would want to bring. And, and then you could say, we, we could go in proportion of who is usually, uh, who is the, who is what, for someone who's looking for a guitar, is it more men? Is it more women? Is it ages? You would go with what the industry or the market is in the same proportion. So you would probably try to align with them. So you would probably learn maybe it's men, 30 to 50. So you would tell the, sc the screener, but yeah. well, what's going to happen, Lillian? Is the screener, they're going to mm -hmm. be looking for people that play music. They, they are going to find them where they are, right? So, uh, but yeah. and that, that would be sufficient, okay? So uh, so now we have, a, we have a, a customer. We have one sense of a customer. Now, who would be the mm -hmm. other customer that you're thinking of? Was there another type Exist of customer? Yeah, it's existing customers, but they're professionals. So, for example, because there's rentals, but I, yeah. I, mean, I think this will go into a second goal. So, I don't know if that's something you want me to touch base on. Uh, um, that, that's okay. Yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll, it's, yes, they're high, tightly linked, right? So, but yeah, let's talk about the second one too. So, for the second one, it would be an existing user 
uh, preferably like a professional because they may teach lessons or they may use it for performances. So they might rent uh, equipment because they're trying out different equipment. They don't want to commit to a particular, you know, I guess, instrument within its category since there's different price points, different brands, things like that. Okay, so uh, good. So we have two users. So we have, and when you say existing user, uh, I know in digital, in UX, we say users, but I think it's important to say here, it would be a long Metcalf customer, right? You're interested in an existing long Metcalf customer, or maybe not, I'm asking. Uh, so a long McQuaid returning or existing customer that's loyal. Yes, very They're important. Loyal to the company. Yeah. So you're bringing someone who's not a customer. So our first profile is a non-customer. He's in market for a guitar. And we're going to go with the, 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 the profile or demographic of a for those customer and uh, in proportion as well. But we need three to five. So we're good. And then this is where if Long McCab is your customer, they'll have all yeah. the insights and they'll be able to tell you They'll be able to say, well, you know, our customer or this is this. And then you, what you will need to think about is how much of a difference mm -hmm. will that have on what I'm actually trying to get to in my testing? Okay. And that's going to okay. be important. So how much of a difference between the two types of customers? So the two types here, though, the new or existing, yeah, there are differences. So let's yeah. talk about the, the rentals. So the customer you want to bring for rentals, obviously they're different. They're going to know, they're already going to know about the brand, right? So now you're saying, mm -hmm. Mr. Screener, I want to bring someone who's a long McCab caddy uh, customer. Uh, and mm -hmm. then uh, you probably want someone who's done, who's never done rental, because again, it will depend on what you're trying to do, right? What okay. did you find for rental? Did you find issues or maybe long McCab told you that they'd like for more people to, to use the rental services, but there, 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 there's, it's not happening. Do you? Why did you pick the rental particularly? We found a lot of difficulties with the rental. They, there is a lot of promotion around renting, and they list the prices per day, per week, per month for rentals. But when you select the actual um, instrument that you're interested in, you cannot book directly online. So it's very oh, strange. So you that's deceiving, right? Yes. Okay, so great. So at this point then, you could, I think you could choose to have someone who's actually an existing or a long customer or not a long customer, but you want someone who's actually done rental of music. And maybe you say, well, it's a particular music instrument. I don't know, but, or maybe it's any instrument, but you have a lot of flexibility. But again, the yeah. question is, which difference it's not gonna make a difference whichever rental it is. You just wanna explore the rental. Yeah. So what I yeah. would do if I were you, I would leave it open. It's a rental, okay. a customer who's in market for rental or someone who's actually done some rental, whether they've done long, they haven't done long, but you're going to get some insights from them too. So we have two customer groups. Uh, and uh, yes. and then that's how, in terms of screener, then you would have a screener that would target five, three to five people that are new, non-customer, but in market. Then you have five people, mm -hmm. let's say five, that are in the rental market, whether they are long or not, the ch the, the so that benefit would be a total of six to ten, right? Three per group or five per group. Yeah, let's say let's it's three per three to five, uh, but let's say five. Yeah. It's easier than say three to five, three to five. Let's say five five. So five in markets, non no guitar, five yeah. in markets yeah. that normally have done rentals, and and then here you would say you probably want someone who does rental like. Ex, you know, on a regular basis, you don't want someone who I think you probably want someone who's done rental because I think you want to get mm -hmm. some insights to on what they know from rental experience and bring that to long, right? Maybe you're trying to convince long, yeah. maybe it is right. So maybe you want to bring someone who's done rental and you want to bring someone who, uh, who, uh, who's been, uh, who, depending on the music, you'll have a choice of. Uh, they just started how far, how far are they are the journey but you just you know you want someone who doesn't have a guitar but they're actively involved and i think that's probably sufficient for your screener uh, okay. yeah okay so are there any questions about the screener because that's really what the screener is is 
And usually, but usually it's easier to start from the goal, right? And it's pretty much what you guys have done. You went to the site and you started exploring the site and then you were like, I think there's issues. And then you go bottom up and then you was like, okay, the rental issue is an issue. So now you're like, well, I'm going to bring people from rental, right? So it's okay. usually bottom up. So you start from the goals almost and then you go, okay, well, who do I need to bring to be able mm -hmm. to test this area? So that's that prepares every process to get ready for when the steps come and they do the probing with the with the potential um, people that will be testing the site. Is that okay, just to recap? So yeah, okay, so let's let's pause because there's a lot. And as I said, preparing is the bigger piece and the most critical piece to doing use bell testing. Uh, testing is actually relatively easy, but there's things to do and not do. So okay. uh, I see a question on the chat. Someone says, Anya says, is hiring a screener company expensive? It's, it, they will charge you per, per number of recruit people that you recruit. Usually they're probably going to charge you $75 to $100 per, per head. So you have to budget for the, the recruiting agency. It will charge you very similar to the incentive. They will charge you $100 per person to recruit. So you can almost think $200 per uh, participants but again it might be minus plus but that is uh, their, their, their cost they will charge you per number of participants that they recruit and they will and then the incentive um, and then you'll have to pay the incentive as well so per participant you should estimate 150 to 200 dollars per participant in your budget okay so what was your question Lilian so I was just uh, asking, just to recap what you were saying, the screener pretty much is doing all the probing with the potential and existing customers before the customers actually go into the testing. Yes, they will, the, the, the agency, and that my recommendation, as I said yesterday, is really have an agency to do it because it's a full-time job. You have no idea how many people they have to call. Okay. Especially, especially the music. And this is a good example. I've never recruited for music, Lillian, they may say, ooh, they're hard to find and they're actually gonna be, they will want more money. I don't know, yeah. okay? Yeah. But uh, the recruiter and the screening, the recruiter will do the hard work, but they will be looking at you for what do you want? What do you mm -hmm. want for, and we've already discussed that. We have a sense of who do we want and what do we want. Now, okay. if you work along or long as a client, they'll have, they'll have tons of information about their customer. You, yeah. You're gonna have, to, you're gonna have a challenge to, to uh, say what you think is really important or not relevant to what you're trying to get with them. But mm -hmm. of course, we're in class, we don't have everything, but we, we're making assumptions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So at this point, you want to explore someone who's in market and mm -hmm. who's never seen the brand. And maybe, uh, maybe they, and the, you could say to the screener, uh, you know, make note of how, where they've been shopping so that you will get a bit of insight okay. of where they have been shopping. And then that would be something you would use in your opening with them. And the benefit, the value is, if they've been shopping, then they're gonna give you insights of what they've seen. And then you're gonna list that on your first question, right? What do you expect? And then that's gonna be insight for long as well that you're gonna give. It's extra, it's okay. greedy, I call it greedy. Okay. Same thing with rental. So now we have, we already have a bit of a sense of a, of a screener. Now, in the in the screener, obviously, uh, you want to keep you you want to really focus on the essential of what is really important for what you think will make a difference in your task. So now, here's a challenge you're going to find some time with your client. They're going to try to put as many questions, marketing questions, in the screener, and you know, like family income. Maybe they have an income in mind, but you will go with what they know as who plays music and then you're going to base your your demographic is going to be based on them but you want to you want to keep it light because anyway the screening company will tell you they'll say Lillian, if i ask them 20 questions it's going to be hard to find people and they'll give up so uh you have to balance it. this is and remember you only bring five to ten people so this is not to do marketing research of everybody who's in market about yeah. music and guitar right we are interested in what happens on the site. So 
uh, you you want to bring them in. You want to hear them. You want to see them. You want to watch them. We're not doing attitude. We're not trying to measure uh, attitude towards music. We're not trying to see where the market opportunities are for people in music. This happens elsewhere. Okay, so okay. you have to be careful not to use use about it testing, because remember it's it's observation based. We're dealing with small numbers, but with observation based. You don't need more than five people and you'll learn that you will see that but we're not trying to sense the market opportunity mar markets opportunities for music because that this is something that will happen elsewhere uh very very important so good we kind of have two users so let's go back to the person who's in market and uh, who doesn't have a guitar then we've said what happens with that so let's go back to the task to the task scenario uh, let me just share this document again. That was like looking for the car. So I'm just going to open up the document. My and Blackboard is frozen on me because it's probably we're probably switching this class could begin, class could big out. So let's uh, be patient. I, I'm not going to go anywhere, but it may close on me and then I'll come back to Blackboard so you guys don't go anywhere. But I know you can still hear me. I've been through this almost every classes. Okay, so let's continue, and then I will, um, and then I will uh, cover more detail. So now that we have, let's see, our, our Lillian has her her participant with her, and uh, and then she's asked the participant, "Great, I know you're in market. You're looking for guitar. So that would be your first opening questions with them. I know you're looking for guitar. You're here." Uh, this is exciting. You want to show that you're excited about guitar. You may not know much about guitar, and but you don't want to lie. You may want to say, you know what? But at this point, Lillian and the team, you probably learned more about guitars than you knew when you started doing the assignment, right? So, uh, and that's important. You kind of have to show a sense that you care. You know the business. You know the industry. Of course, your clients will have picked you because you probably have done this in their industry. But you will say. Uh, great. So you share with me what you would expect. Actually, I'm going to share with you. I'll play a bit of the role of the participant. Well, I'm not in market sure. for guitar, but uh, I would probably explain, uh, expect a place. I, I would probably go to get search. And now here's a good thing. You could actually, when you want to move down to the first scenario, you could actually say how, where would you normally go? How would you normally go about finding, uh, finding, you know, a, a guitar, the best place to buy a guitar? The chances mm -hmm. are, in some of the cases, they will tell you, Leanne, I go to Google. So you you can actually take yeah. them to Google if you want. So the okay. goal of your survey testing is you want to do as if they were alone at home. Okay? Yeah. So what, now that they've told us, this is what I would expect to do. Then you'll say, great. So let's go to, uh, let's go and find the, uh, the, um, the, 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 we're going to go to the site. You can say, we're going to go to Long Macab, but you can ask them, how would you normally go about it? And they will say, well, maybe I'm going to go to Google. You can do the same thing if you want. You can go to Google. They're probably going to type in music, music, Long Macab, but maybe they will not because they may not know of Long Macab. So, so I, I, like, would I let them do their own search and then kind of suggest to them, hey, try out Long and Quaid? No, I'll tell you why. It's a good idea, Lillian, but I will mm -hmm. tell you why you don't. Because you, uh, and again, I think this is part of, you get it, You may end up spending a lot of time on Google, yep. and then uh, 10, 15 minutes has gone by, and you have not had a chance to go through your scenarios. Yes. So uh, if you work for Long, you know, if you work for Long, uh, McCabe, and you sell guitar, at this point, hopefully, you will know how customers actually get to you, how they find you. The chances are they find you through Google, uh, or you you actually find your customer through uh, word of mouth, but you find them from social. Long Macab will know exactly how people are coming to their brand. That's not the goal of usability testing. I remember at the end of the day, you as a moderator, you want to bring them into your task. You want to bring them to the site you want them to do, but you could ask them and say, how do you normally go about, uh, they will say probably you go to Google, and you could leave it there if you wanted. You could just leave it there and say, okay. wait, and make note of it. But you're not here to tell Long Macab how people actually search, how people find. Someone else okay. needs to know at this point at Long Macab. So now you could say, let's go to Long Macab. And then you go to Long Macab, 
and you will tell them. You'll say, great, you told me that, and this is me like, I could be a participant, right? Let's say I pretend I'm looking for music. I could say, well, I've been looking for music. I found some sites where I can see like, you know, lessons, music lessons, or I can find guitars and then there's, uh, they're gonna explain to me the differences between guitar. I can probably chat with someone and uh, maybe I can book an appointment or I can go to a place and touch it, feel it, or mm -hmm. maybe I can actually buy it because I have I know exactly what I want. You, you don't know that, right? So, uh, and then you go, great, so let's go to Law of Cab and, uh, and then you, you say, great, you told me that you are actively looking for a guitar, you would actually be able to buy a guitar online. Can you even buy a guitar online? Yes. Okay, great. So you will say, great, uh, let's go that, uh, let's go and buy a guitar online. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you have an option to say, to give them a specific guitar that they're looking for, okay? Or you can leave it up to them uh, and say, well, is there a particular guitar that you're interested in? Maybe they're going to say, yeah, I'm looking for that guitar X, Y, Z. Then you okay. can say, let's go to Long Cab, and then you take them to Long Cab website to the homepage like this, at the homepage at this point. And then you say, uh, great, uh, go as if you were home, and uh, and then look, let's look for that guitar. And then you and then you leave them. Down. At that point, you just leave them. Then okay. you would say, uh, you are at home. Pretend that you're by yourself. I'm here, but uh, I will I will. I will let you go through the uh, what you would normally do at home. So uh, and then uh, and then you'll say, do you have any questions? They may say, no, this is fine. And then you just let them. You let them go. And then you ask them to think loud. Okay. So if that was me, who's actually now going through, I would say, great. Well, okay, Lilian. So. Uh, I'm actually looking for a guitar, something that says guitar. Great, I can see guitar. So and then uh, and then and then you just observe. You just be still at this point. You don't want to give yeah. them too much guidance. You don't want to give them guidance. Okay. Okay. So uh, and then and they will. Start, allow yeah. them to speak out loud. If I if I notice they're quiet, I just say, Hey, why did you do? Uh, what made you decide to click on that? Right? Is this where I start to kind of encourage them to talk without? questioning why they're making the choices they're making okay very good question uh, at this point you just want to let you want to leave them alone you want to let them go you don't want to you okay. the only good rule is you don't interrupt you listen okay. you observe you don't interrupt you will interrupt if you feel at some point that, that they're actually struggling but if they're struggling uh, they have to tell you what is going on so think aloud and uh and then we 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 are going to talk more about think aloud but think aloud is really critical when you're actually running the session yep think aloud is where you're going to say so lydia you would have told me eve as you try as you shop for a guitar i want you to tell me loud what you're actually looking what you're trying to do like as this so i would say and then you can give yeah. them an example you could say okay. Yeah, you could say uh, you could give it an example if you want, or maybe they'll be they'll be familiar. But you, hopefully, they know. If they don't, they'll say, "Well, uh, I'm gonna take you to the site. You said it. You would like to book look for a guitar, and uh, so I'm gonna take you to the homepage. And then you're gonna say, okay, great. Well, I'm looking for a guitar. Great, I see it. Oh, I don't see it. I don't like. You want them to just express to you what they're actually saying, and I, they'll get it. Usually, they get it very quickly. It's actually awkward for them at the beginning. Yeah, but uh, they will become very, very, uh, very comfortable of doing it. So, okay. uh, yeah. So at this point, if you notice, and this is very relevant, we're going to talk more about how we conduct it. Everybody is going to be conducting. Everybody is going to be participant, facilitator, moderator, and I'll be uh, be able to coach everybody in this process between now and uh, in the next few weeks. Okay. Okay. So uh, if we go back to our goal or scenario. We stayed very generic for this particular customer, right? So Lillian said, I want to bring someone who's active on the market, who's looking for guitar. I don't think you care about a specific type of guitar. So the more generic you stay with a specific goal, the better, because the more details you will get them, you kind of starting by leading them, by, by giving them too much information. So when you say, uh, go and find that guitar, that's generic enough for them to go with what they are actually uh, thinking because they're actively in market, right? They're going to go back to what they've been doing or what they think, and then they're going to take you through that. And then you're just going to stay still and take notes. You're going to let them go. And uh, and then uh, and then 
you know, though, at this point, when you went through guitar and shop guitar, yep. uh, you've noticed areas, right? You've picked shopping guitars because you're probably noticing challenges with shopping guitar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what you really want to do, and I'm assuming that you went and you really shop guitar. Now, what's yeah. going to happen? You're going to have <laughs> consumer. You're going to have consumer that will browse. You're going to have consumer who will come and shop at the top. They will search, right? So Correct. maybe maybe in your heuristic, maybe in your evaluation, you found that the search is maybe problematic or the browse is maybe problematic. Everything was problematic. Okay. <laughs> We so, did variation. We did, um, you know, someone that would navigate through the menu and someone that would navigate through the search. Also, someone that would possibly look for what they may be interested in through the homepage. So, because there's uh -huh. something like exceptional guitars as well on the home screen, and that was another option that one of my teammates had explored. Yes. So, uh, but at this point, you probably won't even leave it as open. But you have to make note of. At, you want to you, you're interested in probably the search experience and you're mm -hmm. interested in the browse experience now what hap what is happening and I would say they're they're fair uh, they're they're good tasks they're good uh, they're good uh, sub I would say sub task or sub task or areas that you probably want to be investigating because a lot of people yeah. will either search or a lot of people will browse now they may actually click on your home page okay but yeah. uh, it's i would say it's relevant and irrelevant but you're just gonna let them go okay but let, you them go, let them think about the process as they're doing it if you see them stuck then you ask them questions as to the areas they're stuck on that's the only time you would interrupt them you only interrupt them when you see that they're completely blocked and you know what happens okay. at this point they actually look at you and you will know that they're puzzled, but you, this yeah. is the only time that you actually get involved. Okay. okay. But if, if 10 minutes in the, if 10 minutes, let's say that I am one of those participants and I come to this site and I've been like, I, I've been telling, you know, I will, you want them to think loud. So let's say that I've been saying, okay, great. Uh, I shop and maybe, maybe me, I'm inclined to go to, through the shop and then I'm going to roll over through the shop. I go guitar. And maybe I'm actually going to click on shop and not even click on guitar. And then they're going to click, click. Now, now, if they click, click, then your observer taking notes should make note of it because that is an indication that maybe, maybe they want shop to be clickable and it's not. But you just make note of it. But you don't see anything about it. You don't okay. see why did you not click. You don't. Okay. That's going to be very important. So you need to be clear on where, where, what are the areas that you want to investigate. So, Lillian knows that shop for guitar is very important. Now, she's noticed browsing mm -hmm. is an issue. She's noticed that search is an issue. Now, the, the participant may very well just do browsing, OK? Then you're going to let okay. them go. And maybe I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I've been look, I actually want to do acoustic, acoustic guitar. Yes. And then, yeah, you just <laughs> let them, OK? You just okay. let. And then they're going to look at you. They'll say, do you want me to continue? They will. They'll say, do you want me? Okay. You'll say, yes, yes do as okay. if you're at home but then you want to make sure that they give the talk but you will see that sometimes they'll go silent and then they'll scroll right mm -hmm. and uh and then okay and let's see that's this is me i'm gonna say oh the martin guitar pink kind of cute i'm actually very interested in the specific guitar i saw this very cool guitar maybe now they're gonna start going into a specific guitar that they maybe they've seen you mm -hmm. let them know because now you're going to be touching you a, a specific search, right? Like you have people that are generic, you have people that are very specific. Now, if he mm -hmm. says, I'm actually looking for that very specific guitar, and let's say, I'm actually looking for that guitar I really saw, I forgot the name, but uh, it was, uh, I don't know. It, let's just say they were searching for price point though. Like maybe they're like, my first guitar, I just want to try out something cheap. Mm. So that could yeah. be something that they're doing. So, uh, Yes. Now, here's the thing. At the beginning, you could very well mm -hmm. let them. You could do what we've said so far. Great shot for a guitar. They may actually say, I've, I'm very price sensitive. This is my intro guitar. Maybe now, well, and in your screening, you would have said that you want someone who's looking at intro guitar. If you think mm -hmm. it makes a difference as well. So, uh, but let's, if, let's, but that is something you would need to tell your screener because I think you're dealing with someone who has 
really no experience, right? But I would say yeah. intro, someone who has no experience, they're probably all intro, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the chances are they will take you to being not, not specific and they will tell you that, uh, you know, it's it's not a, it's important price, it's important for them. They want like a basic guitar. If that was mm -hmm. me, it's me. Yeah. I'm actually looking for a basic guitar. Yeah. Right now, I don't know where to go for a basic guitar. I don't know. Yeah. There's no um, sort by film. Yeah, there's, there's no guide, right? Yeah. So at this point, you really let them, like if that's, if this is really, they're looking for bass, you know, intro guitar, they don't really know, you just listen, you just listen them in and you say, great, so lend them in. But then if at some point you really see that they're, they're not able to go anywhere, then yeah. you have an option. So you have an option to say, what what would you what are you actually looking for but you but they probably already told you through their thinking loud hopefully they will have said well i would hope that there's something that will say beginning you know i can i can filter and maybe see something that will say new to guitars right like you would have got some insight but you would have just made notes you would have noted 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 now you know it's just not there then you see what would and then if they look at you and they'll say i'm stuck Great. So when someone is stuck at that point, you will say, you have two options. You can take them to the next thing that you want them, that you think that you've seen in your flow. And this is where it's very important. So what is next? So what has happened in your heuristic evaluation? What what do you think should happen in, in, in reality at this point for that particular goal? How far do you go in your heuristic? Did you stay here? Did you stop here or you went further? We went further, but as we were going through these steps and noticing the experience, we were taking notes on the positives and then also the issues. Um, yeah. But this was in the messy state of like just getting all the information down before reorganizing and establishing like what heuristic would that be categorized as? Yeah, so uh, I would say don't be too worried. Well, uh, yes, you, you when I do heuristic evaluation, I start by the user goal just as the way that we're doing it. And then okay. I try to see, and then I make note that things are good, that things are bad. And then I map them to heuristic at the end. Okay. That's how I would do it. If you try to think with heuristic as you do, it's too many things to think about. I usually go, I go to the user goal. I put myself as a user. I try to look, to go through the experience as a first shopper, guitar shopper. And I go through the that experience. Now yeah. at this point, if if I know that I'm getting a little guidance on which one to pick, then I make note of it. But okay. uh, let's say that there was guidance, uh, there was guidance, and uh, and then you would probably just observe them. But here we know there's no guidance. Yeah. So, so you could say to the user, "Great, awesome. I understand you would probably be looking for guidance. What would you do at this point? It would maybe they'll say I would probably abandon. Awesome. Yeah. Now you make note of this. That means yeah. that goal has failed." So when someone says, and all, of this, all of this is being included in the part that's for the script, or was the script just uh, a sample dialogue of what to expect before we go through this experience testing with the person visiting the site? Yeah, the script will, uh, the script will, will the template that I give you for the script will, yeah. it's not going to give you all the details of everything that you're going to say during the, because it's impossible. And the okay. script will include all of the opening. Thank you for coming. You're here. You're not being tested. You're being recorded. Sign. And then you'll say, "Let me, uh, let me just go through a little questionnaire." So you go through like a mini version of the screener. Your script will include that. And okay. then you'll say, "Great. So now we're going to move on, and I will give you. Here's what you will do. What will happen in the next 40 minutes? I will give you some tasks. I will give you some scenarios to do. There are five scenarios. Let's say you're mm -hmm. going to say, I'm going to give you five scenarios." And, uh, and then when we've done all the five scenarios, I'm going to have a few questions or you'll be able to give, ask me a few questions and then, uh, and then we'll, and then you'll get your incentive and you're done. Bang. Okay. So, and then you will, the script will include that in that order. And then you will have where you talk about the scenario. You're going to see my, uh, there'll be five scenarios. Then you can list in your script what those five scenarios are if you want. Okay. And then in your example, you would say, yeah, I'm going to have the shop for guitar scenario. Mm -hmm. You may have a little bit more information there if you want. You could include, uh, I'm actually going to pay attention if they're browsing, if they're searching. Uh, and uh, 
and then and that's it okay you need to know though you you need to know at this point where do you want to go you should you want to go through the entire experience of shopping you go this you want someone to be able to shop online right like you want to you want eventually you want completion yeah so uh so but you don't need to put all of the details but you need to be clear on where do you need to take the user when they're not able to go so that what is the next thing that you want to get inside to so let's see let's i don't does that does that make sense it does in your script you're obviously not going to put everything that you're going to say or not say these are just uh, okay. what the, this will be the best practice of what to do what not to do during the session but okay. uh, if you look at the template, you will see that I think the template is uh, is very well done. But again, uh, we're here to learn. I will be able to teach you and, and realign on on uh, on on this particular lab and on the assignment as well. Uh, but a template is a good place to start as well. Okay. So uh, let's keep going. Okay. Sure. Are there any questions from from the class? I think there was one. Are we recruiting outside participants to? The uh, yes, it, well, not for the not for the lab, not for the lab, and not for this assignment. For this assignment, uh, it's going to be us. It's only with class, with classmate. But the final one of the final assignment will be with people that are outside class and outside school. But for this assignment, we're we're playing. We're doing this within us as classmate. That was a question from Anya. Okay, so there's a question about do we need personas and profile at this stage? You need to know who you're actually going to bring. So you have to you you need you need to do the work that you will need for when we actually do the external participants. I think this is probably why there's confusion. So what you have to think about the screener. So Lillian has shared with us she's going to bring people that are non uh no, that are non uh, music no guitar owner but in market. You'll, and then uh, when we go real life, these are the customer you're going to be bringing in the participants. But for this assignment, you have to start, think of this assignment as this is the first time you're going to be forced to think about who you're going to bring in real life. But next week and the following week when we do the real session, it's going to be in class. But you will need that information for when we bring the real people. So Lillian, you're gonna have fun finding people that are in market for music in your friends. So we could, could we get classmates or is, would you like us to look for people specific to the website that we're um, doing the testing on? For example, if someone, uh, someone else was doing like makeup, would you prefer to have, like when we do the outside uh, sourcing, would you prefer someone that is in the industry of makeup, but not a classmate? Uh, we, I would say, go look at the. It's. I think it's a final one of the five. Let's see which assignment. I really don't. I'm guiding from the uh, from the previous class in terms of some of the rules. I'm trying to be aligned with the uh, what the other teacher have done. So it's going to be the the final project. It's a very nice just before accessibility. Let's see. I think we say we want people that are not in the def, definitely not in this in the class. Definitely not people that are in UX. Okay. Okay. So we want people that are, they don't know, we want people that don't know anything about usability testing. But don't worry, we're not there yet. But for this assignment, okay. I want you, I want all the teams to really start thinking through who are you going to bring in the real life when we bring people in the real life, which will be uh, for the, the last assignment. But for this assignment and this lab and for next week and when we do the real, it's only between us. We're practicing before we go real. Okay. Okay. So uh, yes, it's three to five people. So, uh, but what I want you to spend good time for this lab and this lab and this, the next few weeks, it's really being clear on what are you trying to test? What are you trying to uncover? Where are you gonna be uh, spending the time with the participants and uh, on which flow, in which area? But you need to have at this point a sense of, is this a new, is this an existing? And, where like Lillian knows that she's looking at shop and guitar. They spend a lot of time that they're spelling on guitar rentals and uh, and but you know because you've done the assignment number one. So uh, let's continue. So that is going to be one goal. Now what you would do, Lillian, with this participant is you would say great, and they will look at you. They'll say I'm actually uh, 
they will probably say I'm stuck or I have, I would go, there's nowhere for me to go because I don't really, I really don't know what to do. And then you'll say, what would you do? They'll say, well, I would leave, quit. So you make it as a failure that that task has failed. Okay. If they were home, they actually not succeeded, right? Mm -hmm. Then you would say, great, uh, awesome. Uh, I understand that you would probably leave, but let's, let's continue. So okay. maybe at this point, you would make a choice for them. Maybe you would say, okay, so let's go to Martin Guitar. Because you want to go and see what happened at this. And hopefully these people have been actively in market. So they've they've seen other sides and they will, I'm telling you, they're probably going to give you more insight than you actually think that you will be getting. Okay, people, the people are very, they, they're very talkative usually. But okay. you're going to have people that are shy. Then you'll say, great, so think loud. Tell me what's going on. And you stop, you, sh you, you listen, you just listen, you let them go in. Then I'm going to go and I will say, oh, great. Actually, pink is beautiful. I don't know if it's even pink, but it comes pink for me. Uh, okay. And then, <laughs> great, I can see. They, if they're been very, very actively engaged, they will probably give you a lot of things you're going to learn about guitar. And yeah. then you just watch them and then they may just watch the video. Now, now, okay, if the video, if that video is 10 minutes, you would say, great. Uh, you make note, you don't want them to watch a 10 minutes video because okay. you might, you're taking on time of your session. You have to be cognizant of your time, but you would make note, the observer will make note that they've actually looked at the video. Great. Then you'll say, awesome, uh, the video, but if it's only two minutes video, you probably let them do, but or they may just close it. Uh, but I would say don't spend 20 minutes on videos because remember you have a goal. You want to get as many, you want to go through as many of the experiences, but without really taking them to the experience. You want them to come to the places by themselves. Okay? okay. But now you just let them then go and then, uh, okay, great. So they're probably going to do this. They're probably going to say, oh, my prize 3,900. That's definitely more. And they will say, that's definitely more than what I want to spend. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you just let them, you just let them blah, 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 blah. They can say, oh, great reviews. They may click on reviews. They're probably going to say, oh, this is no very good reviews. Like there's, it says 27, but oh, 27. Great. They may actually go through the reviews. Now, let's say that they're spending a lot of time on reviews. At some point, you probably want to get them out of reviews. Okay. This is where you would get involved, but you don't want to be too, uh, too interrupting, but you don't want to be too, uh, Intrusive, like, but at the same time, because yeah. you want to, and you want to say, uh, I understand this is great. I know that you've noticed a lot of times on you spend a lot of time on reviews, but uh, because we have we have so a lot of many other uh, other goals that we want to do together. Let's let's continue, like let's continue, but let me, you know, but continue and do what you would normally do. Then they're probably going to start going to performance warranty. <laughs> like they, they they may spend a lot of time or maybe not. And then they're probably going to go, wow, this is a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I <laughs> like how they actually show me uh, accessories, but you know what? The chances are they're not even thinking accessories yet. But anyway, then you say, great. So then they'll look at you, they'll go, would you want me to go? And then you'll say, yeah, keep going. They'll, then you'll say, great, what would you do? They okay. may say, well, uh, okay, add to cart, but I'm not really ready to buy at this point because they're kind of being fictitious, right? They will say, well, because you've already remember, you may have already put them through this screen, but they were not really prepared because they don't know that this is really the guitar. But they may yeah. say, well, if that was a guitar that I would want, uh, great, maybe I want to add to cart. Or they will say, you know what, I would never buy online. Then you would say, uh, okay, great, you will know that. The observer will know. And you'll say, well, is there a reason why you would not buy online? They may say, well, because I would probably be really interested in touching and feeling and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then, but maybe add to cart. Maybe you want to go to add to cart. Maybe you want to go to pick up a store. Maybe you want to go to shop from store. Now you're going to have a choice to say, where do I bring them? Depending, you will bring them to where you want to bring them at this point. So many options. I know, but don't be intimidated into okay. you into any in the class. This is why you're doing this class. It really comes with practice. And at the, at the very first session you'll do, you'll go, oh my God, this is a lot of things. And this is why you need to have this script, right? And the checklist yeah. I give you. Grip. You also mentioned that they have an hour. Would this be an hour for yes, you? very fast. So you see how much time you can spend in an hour? Look, it's almost three o'clock for us. Hmm. So do we... Do we also have to kind of like not push them, but encourage them? Like there's a time limit. 
no, there's no time limit, but they will know that there's, you have to, con you have to be in charge of the time and the schedule. You have to have a timekeeper. You have to have a clock. Okay. So that you know, you know what time it is. And, uh, and then so that you have sense of time, but you will see, it will go very fast. So that's what I mean by one scenario of shop, like shop for a vacation. If someone else booked a uh, selected Expedia or you in your scenario, Lillian, for shopping for a guitar may actually take you the full 40 minutes. Yes. But you need to make sure that you cover as much things because if he spends half an hour on on reviews, it's yeah. waste of time. Okay. So at this point, I don't. Where did you guys think? Is it at a cart that you think is a, a challenge, or pick up the store, or ship from store? Well, it was weird because you can ship from the store and add to cart. Why do we need to know that you guys have two different inventories that can be sent to my home? So it's confusing. So for example, if you explore ship from store, that takes you to a whole nother journey. Um, so I would like to do art add to cart just for the sake of, I guess, time. Okay. No, but here you have something very, 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 uh, very important here. You want, you definitely want to spend time on what, which option they're going to spend. Okay. Here's okay. what's going to happen, Lillian. They will, they may very well just ignore pickup store and ship from store. They may actually say, great. I actually want to buy online. Now, yeah. maybe Lillian, maybe in your recruiting, Maybe one of your criteria in your recruiting now has to do about you want people that actually want to buy online, or maybe you have yeah. a uh, you have a special interest of pickup store or regardless. This is a question you have to ask yourself. Okay. So you may have a, a filter for your screener that will say, "I want someone who's been actively looking for guitars and who's actually considering of buying a guitar online." Yes. So you may have to make that choice. And then this, okay. the screener will have to bring people that are actually thinking of buying and buying online. You you may have, you may want to do that and that's okay, but you have a reason, right? You just have, you make it up, you have a reason. So if at this point, what's going to happen Lillian is, uh, you know, you want to go to add to cart. Okay. Yeah. So this is your thing. The next thing that you want to do, if they spend half an hour on reviews, then you, you obviously you don't like, you will say, okay, great. I know you will get reviews. So what would you do next? Then hopefully they'll say, well, I, I'm, I would probably add to cart. And that's would probably what they want to do because they are actually thinking of buying online, but let's say they may actually, huh? They're happy with the details. Five out of five. They read the rest of the, the information seems like a good fit for them. Yes. But, you, you you don't say that to them. You would they would no, have to no. Yeah, yeah. But don't know, man. You know, I'm, you may you may yeah. not know, but okay. I'm sharing with you because so that everybody hears about this. You will not say this to them. And the thing in the session, you never really want to put words to them because you kind of leave it to them, and then they'll think that this is what you were looking, and you try to validate it. And now they're gonna try to think, what do I tell? What should I say so that I'm actually aligned with what she wants? And that's really not what you want. Uh, so they may actually say, pick up in store, ship from store. I do not even know I had these options. So the, that may very well come out. Now at this point, you can just make note if you want. And then they may say, well, pick up in store and ship from store. What is really the difference between the two of them? And then they're gonna look at you, okay? And we haven't really covered that. Yeah. They may, they will, they will look at you. Like they will, they're like, oh, what is the difference between pick up in store and ship from store? Yeah. At this point, you don't answer. And I didn't mention that because there's just so many things to say. But at the beginning of your, before you take them to your their first task, or when you take them to the first task and you say, Eve, go online and shop for that guitar. But then before saying that, you will say, think loud. So when I give, give you task, and then uh, I want you to go and shop online for guitar, shop on that site for guitar. I want you to be loud. And here's something that you should know. At some point, there will, there will be time where you're probably going to ask me questions, but I'm not going to be answering. I'm not going to answer you because I want to see what you will do. And if I answer mm -hmm. that I'm giving you, I, 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 I'm interested in seeing what you would know and what you would normally do if you were at a home. So there will be time where I'm actually not going to be answering, but don't be offended by it. Uh, and that they will know them. So, so in this case, me, I would say, oh, what's the difference between pick up and storage ship from home and store? Then I'm going to look at you and you, you don't answer, you don't say anything. Yeah. Then uh, you may say, they, they make, and then they, if they're very talkative, they will do what you want them to do. Anyway, they'll say, oh, pick from, pick in the store. Well, I think pick up in the store. I'm going to, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be able to 
order it, and I'm going to go to a store. Ship from store, then great. I'm going to order online, but then they get to ship to my house. Then, so you let you want to let them talk as much so that they give you as many insights that you can that the observer will write down. So the observer will say, "Pick up in store means to Eve, oh, he's going to place online, but go and pick up. Get in a car, pick it up. Ship from store for Eve means." He's going to order online and then, but they're going to deliver it to his house. He makes note of it. You move on. So at this point, you're going to say, uh, they may actually just look at you and say, here's what I think. And they'll look and they'll wait for you to tell them what to do next. Then, you know, you want to go to add to cart. So you're going to say, let's go to add to cart. Or they may, they may just go to add to cart. But you want at some point get add to cart, but with little as little guidance as possible. But in this case, you may very well have to say, let's go to add to cart. Then I see this. Then I go, what? what is this? Like, you see, like, I'm actually, this is me, like, I'm, this is real. What is that? I'm not even like, I'm still like so high in the marketing funnel. And I'm sure you guys have seen it in the heuristic evaluation. I'm giving you insight for heuristic evaluation. But this is what I'm doing here is what I expect in the heuristic evaluation. If you notice, we all started from a goal. We're going through as if we were doing it. We're not looking at the screen and see which heuristic. We're actually going. So I would say in the heuristic, and I hope, Lillian, that this is very uh, intrusive. Extend your I'm shopping for a guitar. You think I'm actually thinking of a guarantee and a warranty? I don't care. I don't even know if I need it. No, I don't need it. And then, you know, it, the, 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 the user will probably just see all of this that I just said, too. Okay. And, okay, did you find this was an issue or annoying? Yeah, that because... I mean, it was it was good to know, but at the same time, I would have expected I would have been taken to another page, possibly, or you know, I don't know. I just thought it was it was a little bit tricky to understand. Yeah, it could, be, it could be many things. So, uh, but that's you know, it's you're gonna find out in the in the session how much of a problem that is. But I will tell you, people will complain about it. They will see things, but that's okay. This is what you will find, right? Uh, now, what you were saying that maybe you were expecting that you would be taken to a different window, but mm -hmm. you, and you don't ask, and this is very good, because because of you expecting something doesn't mean that you have to then ask them, were you expecting? You don't see anything to them. You just let do, you see what I did? I just pick an option. I said, you just let them do it. You would not want to stop and ask them, did you think that? Because your goal is not to ask them. Your thing is your goal is to have them do, and you uh, you take notes. You 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 listen, you observe. You take note. You don't want to validate. Did you think this? Because then you're leading them. Then then they're gonna start thinking, oh, that was a problem. Should that be a problem? And then they are gonna try to go back. But you don't want to do that. You're kind of leading them into a path, and that is not. If it's not an issue, it wasn't an issue. I was complaining about it. But I, I got all out of it very easily. Did you notice? It was easy for me. So at this point, right now for me, I was annoyed by the window, but there was a way out. In the, okay. I, I did, it did not stop me. So I would not mark this as a failure. Uh, I was out of it. I, I complained about it, but I was out. So now we continue and continue and continue. And add the cart. I've already add the cart. You see? You're going to hear that. And this is an issue. Why am I adding to cart again? I have check out. I'm confused, actually. And this is real life. Like, uh, And the consumer, do you see what I mean? We're seeing exactly the same thing as the screen before. That is a problem. Did you notice this? Yes. OK. I was, and then, and then you're going to say, continue, think loud. They're probably going to say, Lillian, I was actually thinking to just be in my cart at this point. Why do I have to add the cart? Am I not on the cart? You know, no, this is where the note taker are very busy. Then you'll say, great, what would you do? They say, well, I'm going to go check out. Then I go check out, log in. Really? No, I don't want to log in. I want to see my payment options. So you make note. What would you do? Then they, they may say, I actually I abandoned at this point. And mm -hmm. you and I, 35% of people that see this abandon at this point. Yeah, so because you're Yeah. So you abandon, then at this point you make fail, you mark as fail. Okay. Okay. Now we are still, but you want to go through the experience with him, right? Yes. So here's what you would do. Now your question is, 
how do, and this is all part of your user scenario. So you see how you're buying a guitar for Lillian and teams is maybe it's going to be the only thing, the only task that she's going to give to a, a customer. But okay. she's uh, she's she has. I don't know if you want to call them a subtask, and I don't know if it was you, Lillian, who asked me at the beginning. And I think you did. You said, "Do I have subtasks?" And I said, "Let's do what I what will happen in the session." Then you can call them the subtask or not subtask. But I think you're getting to. I think we are. These are maybe subtasks in, in your definition. But uh, you you will need to say to me. I will be in this case. You would say, "I'm looking for someone who's actually want to shop for uh, for a guitar." And, uh, and then you may want to list. I'm actually going to take them to, uh, I want them to make sure that we go to, a, maybe they're going to search, maybe get in their browse. Then I'm going to go through the browse and then I, they're going to go through the search result. Maybe you, I'm going to go to the checkout. I want to go to as far as the payment page. Then I know that this is going to take you 40 minutes. I want to make sure for all the students and the teams that you are very clear on where, where are you going to, dis, where, where are you going, which path, which area of the site that you really want to be sure that you are going with the customer the way that we've just done it with Lilian. So uh, that's really, really critical. Now, what you would have here to do uh, at this point, Lilian, this is a question for you. Do you really want to show, see the process of creating an account because I can register or I can sign in, right? Even yeah. here, I don't really know the difference, register or sign in. <laughs> this is so, this site, needs love uh this okay. is why we do this thing right so here's what you would have lillian you may really want to say you know what we don't want someone we don't want someone to go through the account creation process i'll tell you why because the chances are at this point this participant will probably home he would probably abandon yeah. so uh, what you may want to do you may want to create a, an account you probably you may want to create a fake account and i think we're touching on something important and this is why you need to be very prepared when you go to use bill testing you need to have done all of this you don't you wouldn't you don't want to make this decision on the day of testing mm -hmm. so lilian uh, yeah. if if the simplicity what you may want to do for your team here you may want to create an account in advance okay and then because maybe you're not interested in account creation because you know what, maybe it's you make a decision. You say, you know what, it's not an issue. We know that people, when people go through it, it's actually a good experience. Or you want to go through it, but that would become uh, that will take probably more, would add more time. But it all depends on where do you want to go. How important is this versus the next thing after this? Okay. Okay. So this is then you may want to create a fake account, and then you would give them. You would say when they get to this step, they may say, oh, I'm not doing this. I would actually not create it. Then it's a failure. Then you mark it as fail. But you would say for the purpose of this, for this, uh, this research, yeah. uh, I understand that you you would not create. But I'll give you an email and a password. And here's the email. Here's the password. Okay. Let's let's pretend that we actually gonna we have an account and we're gonna continue move forward. Then you have them to log in. Then you log them in. Mm -hmm. You. You can have them to log in. So you'll get some insight. Then I would probably go, and then I move on to the next step. Then I move on. So you always have to decide, how, where do I want to go? How far do I want to go? And here, if you want to go as far as the payment page, you have to let them, but then you have, and then you can get some insight. So I don't know what's after this. Do you have an, have you registered? Have you gone through the uh, past yes, the states? Yes, we did. Yeah, we yeah. did. So you, and then I think you probably have a lot for 40 minutes. What do you think? I, I think there's a lot of information to go through and revise and kind of take note of. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I think you're going to be very busy with that participant for buying. And then for the rental experience, you're going to need to do something similar and think about where, how far, what do I want for the rental, okay. uh, for the rental scenario. And uh, and then maybe you're gonna have enough of an hour or not enough of an hour. I don't know, but everybody has to be very clear on where do I need to go to to go with a participant without forcing them initially. You want to try to get them to get there on their own, but when they really stop or when they say would abandon. But if this is where you want to go and where you need to go, then you just have to take yeah. them and say, okay, I understand, but let's. Just go there so that you can get some insights on these other area past that big obstacles. But so far, we would have marked that goal fail like from the very, very early on when they were looking for a, 
uh, guidance, right, on the best guitar for a beginner. Correct. Okay, so now, so you you kind of have you have one big scenario, and then uh, you can you would probably you you need to list for yourself where where you know maybe some of the main screen that you think that you're interested in the main areas and also uh, what the issues are but the issues I will know because I will know from heuristic evaluation so uh, let's go through the uh, are there any questions or do you have any questions Lillian when it comes to your your specific uh, your screener or your user goals no I think so far I have a good understanding it, I think it just it is a lot to consume with the process but I, I guess I would like to see what other people might have for their, because I know everyone has different websites. Yes, I know. So uh, let's look at perhaps the um, for what for the class material for what you need for this Sunday. Uh, we need to have the I would the the test plan and the script. So if you if all the students can provide the uh, what I'm really interested at this point is what are the user scenarios that we you're going to be testing and then who are going to be the, the participants that you're going to bring in. But yes, we are going to be doing it in class, but eventually you're going to bring people from outside. You will want to bring people, hopefully, that are in market for guitar, but I think that's going to be a challenge for you. But you have to do as if you were doing it real life. That's really the mindset that I want for all this team. So I want you to think to pretend that this is going to be something that you would do for a real client. But we're going to do with we're going to do with class for next week and the following week. But uh, I want you to go through that thinking, the user scenarios, and where you're going to be taking your customer, why you're going to be taking them to that specific area is important. Uh, and then the screener is probably easier to do because it's really once you know the goal, then you know who you want to bring in. So uh, let's make sure that I give you example, the tech. I'm actually sharing this. And again, there'll be an opportunity for me to realign and say, okay, but this is missing or this is not missing. But for Sunday, I would like, the checklist is there for you to, what you need to think about when you do usability testing. But in the notes, in the notes, this is where you can use the notes is what I had online. Do you, for you to be clear on what will be the user goal and the areas of the site that you want to take. But the test script is very, very important because it will give you, it will tell you what you need to go through as you go with the participant. Uh, and then what normally you do in the test script is you actually print a set, uh, 10 of them so that you have one for each of the for each of the uh, the participants that are coming in, you have one, and then you can take notes there if you want, but you have something for you to follow as you go through, because you'll be nervous at the beginning. There's so many things to think. Uh, you'll be thinking about a lot of things, and this will help you. Uh, but let's look at some of the details in the usability script that you will find. And, uh, and then, yeah, that's really the usability test script is the piece that I'm the most interested in at this point, uh, as long as you include the, the test scenario and the user testing it. So if we look at one for now with the template you will see is welcome participants, blah, blah, blah. Hello, my name is. Before we start, we are currently, the session will take an hour. Please remember during the whole. So I pretty much, the template is pretty much there for you. But what I want from that will be unique to all of you as uh, in class will be your test scenario. So it's, and this is where we are stretching. And it's coming on page. Number of tests. Okay, so on page six, we have X number of tasks. So the tasks are the user scenarios or the things that you want to go, you want them to go through. This is where I really want to have uh, what the task scenario will be uh, in that document, and that will be easier for you and easy for me as a reference. And uh, and then uh, and then the screener as well uh, is uh, the next piece that I want you to provide information, like we did for Lillian, that will I give at least give us a good sense that. I will know who you're going to be bringing in for your sessions. 
Um, and, uh, and that's really what's the most important for this Sunday. Okay, so that said, we've done more than, you didn't really have a chance to do the actual lab, but I will say uh, the, the, the template is, I think, self-explanatory, but it does not give you the task. You have to think about the task. And then there is an example as well of um, the, the screener that you can use, but the screener is almost look like a survey in a demographic survey. But I'm really interested at this point, Noe, who's good, who is it that you're going to bring in? Is there any particular criteria about your participants? Like, think about Lillian. She wants people that are in market for guitars. Uh, she's going to go with the demographic of the market. Uh, and she wants people that are actively looking, people that want to buy online because she wants to go look through the shopping the online, people that have been looking for at least um, you know, maybe two or three months if she wants people that are serious, but they don't own a guitar and that's going to be the profile. And then she has someone who's going to be looking at rental uh, who may be a customer or not a customer of long. Uh, they've been doing rental on a regular basis, maybe once a year they do rental or maybe twice a year. But I just, this is what I need for the recruiter. And then uh, maybe if you know any information more specific about male, male, female, age brackets, that's fine. But it's anything that will make a difference for the online, for what you're trying to do online, is really what I want you to think about. It, how is it important to what you try to do and test and assess and use about testing? I need to see that whoever you want in the screener is actually aligned with the goals and the areas that you send on the site are actually broken. If Lilian was saying, I'm going to bring anybody, but she's really interested in people that have never been and people that are first time buyer in markets. And I will say, Lillian, you have to go back to your screener. Uh, you, it's not, you're not going to bring the people that you really are interested in. So I need to see a connection and understand the choices that you've made for your screener. So this is for Sunday. So you have until Sunday midnight to work. I would say because it's fresh, hopefully it's fresh. Now go back to your heuristic, finish the assignment, and uh, I'll be able to provide also insight on the heuristic but at this point you should definitely have a clear sense of who is what which site which company you found some issues Lillian has found a lot of issues uh, so I will see that in the assignment and if I see that you're not clear on the assignment or you're not clear on the first assignment about heuristic evaluation it's going to be hard for you to do the next piece which is this this piece of this week's lab so I will be available around on the course uh, uh, message if you are stuck or if you have challenges please email me I'll be more than happy to uh, to help and uh, make sure that you submit your assignment by midnight tonight uh, you will be I will be able to review and realign and give you uh, insight as well to help you my goal is to help you to learn not to fail I'm not here to fail I'm here to help you I know this is the first assignment that you submitted I really want to make sure you understand use build testing. It's so much fun. Uh, but yes, it can look a bit complex, intimidating. But there's a lot of material that I gave you. So the deck from yesterday has so much. The lesson, uh, the lesson class, and has so much more details for you to review. Uh, but right now, I really focus on who, what are your goals, the areas of the site, and who you think you need to bring to be able to get them through the site, get them through the scenarios, and 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 get as much from them. And I've, we've already touched on how do you conduct a session, the do and do not. So we've already talked about conducting. But right now, don't worry about conducting. Uh, I want to know where you're going to take them on the site, why you're going to take them on the site, and who you're going to bring to be able to go through those paths. Okay? So uh, are there any questions about what we've done today? So goals or user tasks in the script, the script template is super easy. We really, you really have to put that in specific to use the task, the user task. And, uh, and then you can use any of the templates that you want that I've loaded. I found them on Google for you, to be kind. Uh, and, uh, and then the, a sense of the participants, what you think is important or not important. So Lillian, is it possible to have an extension to go through all the notes, testing, serials, test note, permission to record details? Uh, okay, so an extension for what exactly, Lillian? 
Um, because we still need to go through all these notes, I think there's a lot to go through in the slides and then kind of group, regroup with our team members and go through what's required for Sunday. I feel like there's like a two day window, um, mm -hmm. kind of hard to, I guess, get everything done by then. So I'm wondering if like maybe Monday night could be good for everyone. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. You no, know, here's the reason why. Like, uh, the the reason why I wanted to I wanted to give, uh, I wanted to make sure that there was enough time for me. We have a class of sixty to at least be able to go through. I think ten or eleven teams to be able to give some pointers so that on Wednesday we can actually start running. But I I will tell you, I think we're not going to be able to do run the session on Wednesday. I think we uh, we may need a bit more time to prepare. So uh, that's a bit of my feeling. Let me just let me just double check something here. Okay, I I will make it. We call it in the real business. I call it an executive decision. So we are not going to do the session next week because I think uh, I agree, and I've said that yesterday. I said I have a feeling we may need more time, but let's go with what we have now because i wanted to make sure that we at least have uh we talk about the essential as much as we can we are not going to do this session for next week so uh i will look at but i do need i will need to have the material so that i can give you insight about and then maybe on wednesday what we're going to do next week on wednesday and next week maybe we're going to use next week's to complete all of the material and then we're going to do the we're going to run the session the following week how is that is that better so, but I would like to get a first draft of what you've done so that maybe I can give insights. So I'm going to push the dates and, uh, and then we are not going to do the session next week. So I think we're going to use next week to maybe spend more time to continue this part of getting ready. So next week will be again about preparing. Okay. So, uh, in the, um, I may, I probably not going to need, we probably not going to have more new material and new reading for next week. So we may just continue to, uh, to, with the material that we had for this week. But, uh, we have to, uh, but we have to complete by next week. We have to have all of the material completed before the end of the week so that we can go into how do we conduct the session the following week. Okay, so what I will do is I will post, on, I will send a class announcement to uh, what will be the new, the new, uh, the new dates and what you need to submit by when. Because it's at this point I need to look and make sure that everything is aligned. So continue to work. Uh, it's not going to be for Sunday, but I would say I'd like to have a first draft of something, and maybe it's going to be Tuesday. So that I can have then something to look and give feedback. But maybe it would be better if I was able to give you feedback. So for Wednesday, you guys have already something and some feedback that we can do and adjust. But for the time being, keep going with goals, keep going with screeners. But most importantly is the assignment. The first assignment is due for tonight at midnight. So make sure that because I will that I will also need to look at, right? So I will communicate through the class announcement what are the uh, the drop dates and what is needed. But it will obviously going to be the the goals, the task, the script, and uh, but there's just going to be a new date. And then next week, I think we will probably continue. But I will send the class announcement, the announcement with the details. We're not changing the date for assignment one, but this is the I will change the date in this document. So let me just, I will send, change the date for this part of the material. So I will relook at the date for this. I will relook at the dates for the test plan and script. But I would say whatever you can do now, do. It will just going to be easier for you. And it will be, uh, that means more time for me to be able to give feedback uh, to all of you. And uh, I don't know if it will be written. I don't know if it will be verbal. But next Wednesday and next Thursday, we are going to continue with, we're going to continue with the current material. I'm not going to add more 
uh, more of material to what we've already taught. And I do know it's a lot of material. I was actually, when I was putting that class together, I was like, whoa, that's very, very fast. So as Wednesday, Wednesday, next week, Wednesday and Thursday, we are going to work. We're going to continue. We're going to finish up. So what might happen is on Thursday, maybe it's going to be next Thursday. I may do all of the drop out date, maybe next Thursday, so that we have all the test plan and the script ready by next Thursday. So instead of February 7, instead of Sunday, then on set, it's Thursday midnight, we have to have done all of our test material so that the following week that we can move on to uh, to the uh, doing the actual usability testing like I did, but you will do that with your classmate. So Wednesday and Thursday will be uh, async. So, but I will come here. I'll be here. We're going to do like today. I'm going to open up Collaborate. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to be here. And in fact, perhaps uh, what we can do is I could have uh, the teams to share also some of your uh, some of your material. So come in class on Wednesday, definitely on Wednesday in class. And what might happen is maybe I will have uh, the teams to show me and share with me like Lillian has done, but I will do it individually or maybe we're going to do it all in class so I can everybody can hear. Do you like the hearing from from? I think it's probably better, right? If if I can, if we can do like we did for Lillian, and then you guys can give me some insight, and, and then every, all the class can hear it. That's also an option. In all cases, I will send an announcement, but come to class on Wednesday, and most likely the the date for submitting the test plan and the scrap, the final will need to be done all by, by Thursday midnight and next week. But you'll have, we're going to have Wednesday and Thursday uh, together. Does that sound good? Great. So I had a feeling we would probably run into this situation because there's just so much. Uh, my goal is not to rush. My goal is, and we're not in a race, my goal is to do well and for you to feel that you're learning. And I remember when I did my first, it was very overwhelming. There was a lot of things and I was lucky that I had people that were, had done it. I've learned from them. So uh, enjoy your weekend and I will send the class announcement with the new dates. Uh, let's meet here on Wednesday. So that we can uh, we can either do like we did, or I can actually put you in breakouts. You work in your teams, which we may likely do, uh, and I will come and visit, and then you guys will be able to share with me what you've done, and then I can help you through the obstacle. But today, tonight, don't work, don't forget about the assignment, the first assignment, because that is your baseline, and then uh, and then I'll be able to mark that assignment and also give feedback. So it's going to be a busy week, two three weeks. Enjoy your Friday, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you next week. And I will send a course announcement, but it's very much going to be what we just discussed with, in terms of dates and time frame. We good? So there's no new material for next week. So make sure you go through the material, uh, all the slides, the script. You will see it looks like it's a lot. Actually, I have more readings for you, but I think putting more readings for you will probably going to uh, confuse you or overwhelm you. So, And if you have any questions between now and then, please reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help. And I can stick around now. So if, yes, I can stick around. I'm here. Alessandra, you want to come? Voice? Yeah, um, I did have some questions about the assignment tonight. My group came in.